Yo, what's up, people? It's your boy. I'm Chris the Down One, and I am back with another video. It's been a real slow sports entertainment news week, man. Really nothing to talk about. Uh, but I, I pulled this article from NBCSports.com. You can go check it out for yourself. You can also check out, I think the same article is on BleacherReport.com. But Jordan Clarkson is telling the world that they're the Cleveland Cavaliers are going to shock the world, uh, you know, since LeBron James no longer represents or play for the Cleveland Cavaliers. And Jordan Clarkson said a lot of people are going to be left astonished with their production uh, this upcoming season. You know, uh, everyone thinks that the Cleveland Cavaliers are going to, including myself, fall uh, down the tank tubes. They're going to be a lottery contending team. But the one thing I have noticed and I have told you guys that uh, I, I think they're going to be a con they, I think they're going to be contending in a lot of games. They're going to be a sub 500 team uh, and they got a better roster and they got more veterans on this roster uh I, I, people seem to forget like when LeBron James left uh, the first time uh, when he left the Cleveland Cavaliers to join the Miami Heat when he took his talents to Miami uh, that team was gutted I mean there was you know there was really nothing there uh, the Cleveland Cavaliers have a lot of potential pieces and parts that they can work with Tyrone Lue can work with uh, obviously Christian Thompson is going to be in the starting lineup uh, and the reason why he was put on the bench because of last year, LeBron James. LeBron James wanted uh, Kevin Love to play the five. Uh, and, you know, it, it was uh, an unnatural fit for Kevin Love. But uh, I understand why they put him in the five spot because obviously Kevin Love could not keep up with the the best fours and the best threes in the NBA. So they decided to put him in the five spot and that would uh, add more shooters on the court. Now, since LeBron James is no longer there, Christian Thompson is going to immediately be put in the five spot. Okay. Rodney Hood is going to, uh, is, is going to flourish. Uh, they're going to let him be Rodney Hood and the, the best Rodney Hood you can get is the one that can uh, penetrate, uh, uh, you know, uh, through the hole, uh, get those uh, contested baskets, uh, those corner uh, uh, shots, as well as a couple of threes. So you're going to see Rodney Hood's production improve since LeBron James is not there. Now, before I go any further, I want people to know that this is not a shot at LeBron James. This is just, I'm just pointing out the simple fact of it is, now the Cleveland Cavaliers are going to have to play as a unit, as a team. They can't just depend on LeBron James to pull them out every night. They just can't just be waiting around the three-point line, seeing what LeBron James is going to do. Obviously, this offense with Tyron Lue, Tyron Lue always wanted to implement a a team style of play, particularly on the defensive end. I think their defense is going to be improved. Uh, I think the offense is, is, is going to be very questionable uh, on some nights when Rodney Hood can't get his shot, uh, when Jordan Clarkson can't get his shot. Uh, Christian Thompson, I can see the potential of him doing a double-double, and I think they're going to be leaning heavily towards Kevin Love. Now, J.R. Smith is a unique piece that you really don't know what type of production you're going to get from J.R. Smith. Uh, I feel like since LeBron James is no longer there, I think a lot of J.R. Uh, Smith's woes was the constant pressure on him to produce a shot in the final in the final uh, seconds of the shot clock. I think uh, you're going to get a better J.R. Smith this year uh, because now. He's not going to be. Uh, he's not going to be placed into that role. He's just going to be just another player, another piece. Uh, I don't see them getting rid of J.R. Smith because, to be truthfully honest, uh, really no one wants J.R. Smith. Uh, <laughs> you know, and, and see J.R. Smith on their team. Uh, I feel like J.R. Smith is, is going to be with the Cleveland Cavaliers 
I give him until at least the end of the uh, of 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 next season. Uh, I think he'll still be on that roster even with the uh, uh, you know um, uh, trade deadline. Uh, but you know, it, it's a possibility that he could be traded to a contending team that's uh, that's needing a shooter. And if J.R. Smith can improve his resume this season and say, hey, yo, you can depend on me for shots. If he can improve on that uh, perspective, then I can see a lot of suitors lining up for J.R. Smith. But as of right now, I just don't I just do not see it. Um, and you got the other pieces out there. I think Larry Nance Jr. coming off the bench as well as Jordan Clarkson, or you can put Jordan Clarkson in the starting lineup. Obviously, they're going to experiment and uh, put J.R. Smith in the starting lineup and see how that works. Uh, but they got a lot of veteran pieces there that they can mix and match and see what type of lineups you can have each and every night. Uh, I, I think they're going to be consistent. Uh, I think Tyrone Lou is not going to be mixing up the roster, uh, you know, you know, experimenting with different pieces every night. I think he's just going to let it play out and see how uh, these experiments work over time. Um, he's going to definitely imp uh, implement a half court defense. Uh, they're not going to play. Uh, they're not going to play very fast. They're not going to have a lot of shooters on the court. But I think by slowing it down, by slowing it down, um, I, I think they got enough pieces on that roster to contend and win a lot of ball games. Okay, um, as well as the other pieces that they're gonna that they picked up in the trade and in free agency. Uh, I don't think there's gonna be a lot of people clamoring to play for the Cleveland Ca uh, Cavaliers this free agency. But you got to go somewhere, particularly when uh, no one else is calling uh, or or picking up the phone for you. Um, so you have to play somewhere and they might look out and get even, um, uh, uh, you know, some more veteran NBA players to play on the roster. I, I, I think, uh, and I've been st stating this for the past three or four years. Well, the past three years with LeBron James, with the Cleveland Cavaliers, I felt like they should have, uh, instead of trying to be, uh, be like the Golden State Warriors, they should stick to what 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 they're good at and it was their defense uh by keeping christian thompson in the roster even though he's not you can't really depend on him on the offensive end but what you can really depend on christian thompson is a reflector in the middle uh in the middle of the lane uh, a lot of slashers would not penetrate if Christian Thompson was there. They would be hesitant and then they'll have to make a decision. Should I, uh, you know, try to uh, get this layup or this dunk over Christian Thompson or should I kick it out or should I take a, a, a higher percentage shot, a, a higher percent chance that this shot may not go uh, in the uh, in the basket? So. Uh, I feel like having implementing Christian Thompson back into the five, that would help the Cleveland Cavaliers. Uh, another thing that would help the Cleveland Cavaliers is Kevin Love. He will have to play the four. I, I think Kevin Love, the days of Kev Kevin Love playing the three are over with. I, I feel like he's a natural four. Now, when they play those nights where there's a lot of fours in the NBA that are uh, you know that are really threes and sometimes twos that they, they, they got that type of skill that kevin love is going to have a hard time staying uh, in front of but if they look if they implement uh like half court defense zone defense zone defense would really fit best for the cleveland cavaliers because they can uh help one another uh when you're talking about the opposing teams out there that they're going to be playing against um, another thing that's going to help them is by slowing down the offense, taking um, higher successful shots, even if they have to, uh, uh, you know, waste a lot of time on the shot clock to get the right shot. Uh, instead of just having, instead of playing iso ball or putting Le LeBron, letting Bre LeBron James take the ball down court and then figuring out what he's going to do with it, 
they're all waiting on what LeBron James is going to do with the ball. Instead of doing that, playing a team type of def- uh, uh, offense, I think that's going to be very beneficial for the Cleveland Cavaliers. The chemistry is going to ultimately improve, and they and the players won't have uh, that chip on their shoulder of doubt and concern and pressure and stress. And I think that's going to play a bigger part in the overall improvement of the Cleveland Cavaliers. Now, I'm not going to sit up here and tell you guys that the Cleveland Cavaliers are going to uh, have a playoff spot. They're going to be contending for the playoffs. But if you look at the East, if you take away the Boston Celtics, the Miami Heat, uh, the Milwaukee Bucks, it, when you start peeling away uh, those uh, high, those those successful teams, there's eight spots. So they have to be filled by somebody. Um, the bull, I mean, the Bulls. Uh, you know, even though uh, they, you know, they're trying to improve the roster, uh, I'm not betting a boatload of money that the Bulls are going to make the playoffs. But when you got all these other teams like the Bulls. The Magic, yes, the Cleveland Cavaliers. Well, well, you know that you really don't know what you're going to get uh, this year. And, and when you talk about the Pacers, they almost beat the Cleveland Cavaliers with LeBron James. Now they lost the services of Lance Stevenson, but I don't think that's going to be a real a deal breaker as far as them making it to the playoffs. Okay, so. Um, when you look at the, the the Cleveland Cavaliers, the Magic, the Bulls, when you look at teams like that, that have some talent and they have veteran players, as well as a, a good coach, the sky's the limit for teams like that. Uh, there's a possibility that you can see one, if not two of those teams make it into the playoffs, okay? But... As far as uh, the Cleveland Cavaliers contending in the East in the playoffs, being the Eastern Conference uh, representative, I do not see that. Clearly, Boston has a has a lot of talent on their roster, has the best coach uh, in the NBA, in my opinion. And, uh, you know, th- that right there are ingredients of, you know, being a successful team. Okay. Um, I think a lot of teams in the East are going are going to be looking up at the Boston Celtics. Okay, but like I said, it's been a slow news day. Not really a lot to talk about. Uh, hopefully, uh, you know uh, it'll get better later on this week. Um, I might come out with another new edition video tomorrow. I'm not 100 percent sure. Also, go check me out on um, on the Anchor app. It's called Messy Media U Podcast, okay? And this podcast is stuff, I mean, it's it's about uh, stories from my childhood or in my life. We're also going to, I'm also going to be covering things in social media uh, as well as uh, I might do a couple of sports stories, a couple of, of entertainment stories. I might do that. I don't know if I'm going to go that far with it but it's best it's basically a podcast of you know just a guy just shooting the breeze telling you some interesting stories that's going to make you laugh cry uh very entertaining very comedic comedic go check that podcast out favor that podcast subscribe to that podcast support that podcast all right and uh you know it'll be on google It'll be on Apple Music or the Apple Podcast, the Google Podcast. Just uh, search for it and just check out the videos. I mean, check out the podcast. I only got two uh, episodes in that podcast, but I'm going to start pumping the information out daily. They're going to be less than five minutes. So, um, you know, we're going to get straight to the point with these podcasts. Okay. But guys, tell me what you think. Rate, comment, subscribe. It's your boy. I'm Chris Dom one and I am out.